Welcome to Prepare for Success, Optimise Your Study. During this session we're going to cover an academic year overview. Where do you start? Do you have a study plan? How can you optimise studying? Revise and recall and then a summary. So what does an academic year look like? Well, undergraduate programmes in our school, School of Computing, Engineering and Built Environment, typically don't have modules during the summer, unless you're in a graduate apprenticeship programme. Master's uh, programmes may well have classes as well, but otherwise this is the way it goes. We've got 12 weeks of teaching, followed by a break over Christmas and New Year, and then any formal exams related to your modules will take place during roughly two weeks put aside at the start of January. Then there's another one week gap, followed by 12 weeks of teaching for trimester B, followed by a one week break, and then the exams for trimester B modules and for modules that run across trimester A and B with a formal exam will take place at the end of April, start of May, spread over about two and a half weeks. Then assessment board decisions and results are published via your student portal after the assessment boards have sat, and that's typically in the middle of June. At that point in time, you find out if you've got resets or not. So if you have resets or taught classes, any reset coursework will take place during the 12 weeks of trimester C, and any reset exams from trimester A and B will take place in two weeks put aside in the middle of August. Trimester C is typically the reset diet. So now you know what your year looks like, what your trimesters look like, and that gives you a good overview when you're planning your studying. So trimesters A and B. 12 weeks of teaching per semester, at least 3 modules to study per semester. Uh, typically it's 60 credits worth of modules per semester, which could be 3 20 credit modules or a couple of 20 credit modules and a number of 10 credit modules. But you're going to be busy, as the bottom line. So across, say it's 3 modules, there's going to be multiple courseworks across multiple modules during each trimester. And remember, courseworks also include class tests, these count as courseworks. So something that feels like an exam but is taking place during the 12 weeks of teaching, that's a class test. Many modules do have formal exams to study for, and these take place in the formal exam diets I've mentioned already after teaching is finished for the module. Heads up, the time will fly in. Do you have plenty of time left to prepare for success? Definitely, if you use your time wisely, and that involves planning. So where do you start? You've got so much to review and revise, to memorise, to learn. Question, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is, one bite at a time. You take the overall big item and you break it down into bite-sized chunks. So you break down your study material into manageable chunks. Chunks that are the right size for you because we're all different. You'll find that your memory is better able to cope when you break things down to manageable chunks. Do you have a study plan? Put quite simply, fail to plan is the same as planning to fail. You should, I strongly encourage you, to make a study plan for each week all the way up to the exams if you have them. Certainly if you don't have exams, then all every teaching week should involve a study plan. What I suggest you do is you block out the times when you absolutely cannot or choose not to study, and then pick times that you can study from what's left. And then put them in your planner and commit yourself to your times. You may well stick your planner in your fridge with a fridge marker or in your mobile phone, whatever, whatever works for you. Put quite simply, you can't just attend classes, not study and be successful. You need to study out with classes. And that will involve studying in the university between classes and studying at home in your flat. Now, if you study for one hour per day for five days a week for 12 weeks, that's 60 hours in the study bank. Two hours per day, 120 hours after 12 weeks. Three hours a day, 180 hours after 12 weeks. Four hours a day, 240 hours after 12 weeks. So it doesn't take much to put into your plan studying a certain amount of time per day to really build up the amount of study time you'll put in. And the more you study, the more benefits you're going to have, the more likely you are to be successful. Here's a very simple uh, weekly study plan. Uh, I knocked this up on Excel. So I put in Monday to Sunday on the left hand side and along the top, I've said start at nine o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night in the hourly sections. So perhaps what you do is, if you I don't know what your classes are, but if you look at the evenings here, say I've picked three evenings per week, I'll do two hours, seven o'clock to nine o'clock. Wednesday afternoons, I don't have any scheduled classes, so I might well do 
uh, a bit of studying in the university if I've got classes in the morning and uh, come home later. Then there's me time. Perhaps there's something I do socially on a Wednesday or Thursday night. So I'll put that in the calendar as well. I'll look at the weekend and decide, you know what, Saturday is going to be my day totally for me to do things I enjoy doing because it is important to be successful that you balance, you've got a good work-life balance, that you take time out for you and perhaps I do a couple of hours on a Sunday afternoon. So you get the gist. You can look at your weeks, you can fill in the gaps where you want to do your own stuff, where you want to study, you can fill in your own classes as well to show where everything is and that's it. One of those for every week all the way through and get into that habit at the start of every new trimester where you get your new timetable, look at the modules, look at the gaps, book it in, set it up as your plan for the next 12 weeks. Now, how can you optimise studying? Well, we tend to remember the first things we're told and the last things. So it's called the primacy effect and the recency effect. And we remember those things much more easily than the things in between. So if you're in a two-hour lecture, you're likely to remember the first things you're told and the last things. And there's a big chunk in the middle, it vanishes into the ether. Now, when you're studying, studying for less than 20 minutes isn't enough. You're, you're pretending to study, you're just playing at it. However, be aware, less than 20 just isn't enough. And more than 40, for most people, tends to lead to a drop in concentration. Understanding and recall are at their optimum when the study period is 20 to 40 minutes long. I don't know if you've heard of uh, Tony Bazan, the guy who introduced mind mapping. Tony did a lot of research into studying and optimising studying. So in this particular graph, you have on the y-axis, so the vertical axis, is the amount recalled. Along the bottom, you've got the point in time where learning starts, and to the right, you have the point in time where learning ends. So if we start off with the green line, it starts off with 75% recall at the start of two hours, and that particular curve is the recall curve where no breaks are taken and learning continues for more than two hours. So you're studying for more than two hours. And what it's showing there is the longer you go in, the less you remember. So it's dropping to about, what we say, about 30% from 75% across two hours. Then we look at the line above that. The recall curve where no breaks are taken for two hours. So you take a break after two hours. And you'll see it starts off at 75%, drops down, starts going back up a little and probably stops about 55-60%. Then we look at the top line, you've got recall curves for planned breaks are taken. So in this particular example, breaks are taken every 30 minutes. And at the end of two hours, having taken three breaks, the amount recalled is stays at 75%. So there's a clue. Take breaks is the line there. So starting off, if you go for the very top, the most effective one, taking three breaks across two hours versus the one the line below, the second line, the black line, taking a single break after two hours, there's a 15% drop in recall. Then add in the green one where you keep studying after two hours and there's a 45% drop. So no breaks, 45% drop in recall. Quite substantial. Now, the first few minutes and the last few minutes of any period of study are the best for remembering. So perhaps start off with perhaps a 25-minute study period and then a 5-10 to 10 minute break and then another 25-minute study period and so on. And what I encourage you to do is when you take the breaks, don't just sit where you are where you've been studying. Get up, walk about, do something different. You're training your brain to be more efficient, more effective. When you take the break, the brain actually starts working, starts to file things away in the appropriate folders in your head, if you like. But physically get up, send that signal to your brain that you've stopped studying for the moment and it can get on with doing its thing. Now, to help with the technique of having breaks, I'm pointing out a technique called the Pomodoro Technique, conceived by Francesco Sorrell back in the late 1980s. And it's based on a simple tomato timer in a kitchen. And his technique is basically plan your tasks and then figure out how many Pomodoros you're going to take. So a Pomodoro is uh, 25 minutes working, focus work, with a five minute break. And the example we've got here is showing do four Pomodoros. So four sessions of 25 minutes with five minute breaks in between. But after the fourth one, take a longer break. Now, there's lots of apps available in the various app stores. You can download for free, stick them on your phone and set up your, your study techniques. So a very useful way of reminding you to actually pause your studying, taking a break. So revision and recall, Let, let's go through this, or revise and recall. Again, from Tony Bazan, what we have here is a vertical graph on the amount it recalled in percentage. And along the bottom, we have a one day, two days, one week. So when we do that, you find that Recall rises for a short while after learning, and then it falls steeply. So this is about learning something once and not doing recall. 
So in this example here, after one day, it drops from 75% to just below that. After two days, it drops down to about 15%. And after a week, without doing any revision, it drops to probably about 5%. So be aware, if you only learn something once and don't review it again, in a week's time, most of it will have gone. Now, this graph initially looks like it's showing what it showed you before in the previous uh, slide. However, this one also shows how reviews give an enormous advantage. Now, the black area you've seen in front of you is the one that replicates the one we saw before. And what we have along the top, it shows you the reviews. So that's after 10 minutes, 24 hours, one week, one month. So we take this first step here. If you don't review at all, then one month later, your recall has dropped substantially to about 5%. And if that's allowed to continue on, as you can see the spiral as it disappears into the distance, down to zero. If you review something once, just after 10 minutes, after you've done it, so you've, you've done it, you've taken a 10 minute break, you review it again, then in one month's time, you'll have remembered about 30% of what you recalled. If you do a second review after 24 hours, so you've done the study, you've done the 10 minutes, you've done a review one day later, then your recall shoots up to about 60%. If you build in another review after a week, so you've done the material, you've done a 10 minute review afterwards, then a day later, and then a week later, then your recall is over 70%. Then if you add in a review after a month, so you've done four reviews after learning the material, so that's 10 minutes, one day, one week, one month, then your recall is very close to 100%. And once you've achieved that, it basically transfers into your long-term memory and it becomes memory. It's just knowledge that's there in your head. So reviews are extremely important. Now, the key to successful memory is a planned program of review, as demonstrated in the previous slide. In any learning or studying task, if we don't review the material systematically, we're being very inefficient. Put quite simply, learning a subject plus organised review, you get close to total recall. Learning a subject without review, you get about 15% recall. So the recall stage is very important. You actually have to actively stop and recall throughout your study period. And approximately half your reading study time should be spent in recall, noticing forgotten items and rereading them. What kind of techniques can you use to help out with this? Again, bringing up Mr Buzan, I mentioned mind maps earlier on. These were pioneered by, uh, by Tony Buzan and basically start in the middle of a page and branch out from that point and you add pieces, bits and pieces that are going along to, to give you keywords. You can basically contain a whole subject in a single mind map if you have enough space. Why is this a popular way of learning or remembering things, revising? It's closer to the way that your brain works. You get to associate words with each other and you link new information to something you already know. If you want to check out that, you'll find it on the website. Um, I'll include the links for this presentation in the description area in the YouTube video. Now, mind maps, if you've read the books uh, on it, there is no Tony Bazan books, then all those mind maps are very colourful, they're very graphic. So you can use images in colour to enhance mind maps and make it more memorable. However, it's not that essential. If you're not particularly artistic, if this way doesn't work for you, you can use a much simpler way. It's certainly the way I work. Uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, colour and artistic talent is a bonus, but it's not essential. It's whatever works for the individual. This is one I use a very basic bit of mind map software. I started off with exam nerves, I put branches out, got causes, symptoms, ideal state, miscellaneous bits and pieces, relaxation, personal stuff, people. And then I've expanded out there. So the causes, you've got stress and nerves. And as you can see, it all breaks out. You can add in short sentences, bullet points, whatever. And very quickly, I've summarised up in that single uh, A4 page all the things I want to bring back about some exam there's If I was doing a workshop on something like that, it could be summarised up very quickly indeed. As a student at Glasgow Caledonian University, you do have access to apps anywhere. And one of the apps in there is Mind Genius, which is a, a terrific mind mapping tool. You might want to check that out. Hope for your technique, questions are the answer. So as you're studying, maybe you've got a bunch of A4 sheets of paper in front of you, blank, you're studying, you're reading, you're making notes of the key points you wish to recall. What you actually do is you do that on one side of your bit of paper, and then perhaps at one of your breaks, what you then do is you look at the side where you all the things you want to remember, and what you then do is, for each one of those particular items, you write a question on the other side of the bit of paper. During your study session, you summarise the points you want to remember from your notes, use keywords, bullet points on one side of the bit of paper. 
and then create questions that probe your knowledge of the subject you're studying. Then at the end of your study session, you ask yourself the questions and then check your understanding with the summary notes on the other side of the sheet. You can do that again in 24 hours, 7 days, 3 weeks. It's a very useful technique that allows you to check your knowledge. And the great thing about this technique is as you're going along with your learning, say it's a day after you've done uh, your studying, rather than pulling out all your books and things again, all you need to do is go for your pile of notes, look at your questions, run through the questions, and as you're going along, you'll know the ones you remember, you know the answer, great, 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 and then you'll find the ones where it hasn't quite sunk in. So very quickly, you build confidence, you know the answers to a whole range of the questions, and the ones that are coming out where you, you're not quite getting the answer, you know that's the areas you have to focus on. It's a very simple technique, and it just means that the more you do this technique, when you're doing your revision, you're not necessarily hearing out all your books, spreading them all over the place. You're just going through your notes and you're very quickly using your questions to help you check your knowledge, build your confidence and highlight the areas where you need to do some more work on. Use the questions to test yourself the next time you want to review the subject. I'm suggesting a day, seven days, three or four days uh, later. The follow-up review pages are much shorter than your first review pages as you have been installing information into your long-term memory. You're not doing it all from scratch, you're topping up what you've done before, you're refreshing it, you're building it up, building your confidence, building your knowledge. So remember, you have the questions and answers pre-prepared. Other techniques you can try, whenever possible, read aloud. That way you're installing the information visually and orally at the same time. Now the reality is when we read, we actually sub-vocalise. So if there was a high-speed camera aimed at your lips while you're reading, it would actually show micro-movements of your lips as though you're speaking. Obviously you can't read out loud in a library, and you would soon get thrown out. Try, try different things, see what works for you. Another important point, reward yourself when you've achieved what you set out to study. So if at the end of a week, you can look at your study plan, did you hit all the points in the study, did you do it all, then fantastic, reward yourself. Decide something each week that when you are successful and complete your studies, you can basically go and get that reward. And it's also training your brain keywords. Learn to identify and use keywords. These help you to summarise and crystallise the main points of the material. So, and a sequence of major points can be remembered by using a sequence of keywords. Uh, certainly as a lecturer, a uh, member of staff, I typically use my PowerPoints to remind me of what I want to talk about. Rather than through every single word and there is a script, I look at the point and I know what I'm talking to. Now if you're looking for keywords, rely on your first instincts. They'll jump out at you. And if the material you're looking at is yours, then by all means you can use highlighter pens on it to highlight the word or the phrase that covers what you want to remember. Another thing to remember is a lot of technical jargon can almost be quite legalese and, and tricky to, to recall. You could try converting them into your own words to check you really understood and to improve your recall. So if you use the language that you use on yourself, you may well find it helps your memory. The challenge then is obviously when you do recall something is converting it into technical legalese when you're providing the answers. But it's certainly a useful way to install the information. If you input it in the way you speak, the words you use, it's more likely to stick. Now, if you're getting a bit stressed out, and it can happen, you're piled up with work, coursework's are due, it's an avalanche, it's, you know, everything's happening at the one time. It's useful to remind yourself why you're doing this. What's in it for you that makes it all worthwhile? What is your aim? Remember, when things get tough, remember why you're putting yourself through this. So how well do you want to do? And what do you need to do to do as well as you want to do? So when it's getting tough, remember that job, that career, doors are open for you when you get that important bit of paper. That's perhaps your motivation to keep going. In summary, have a study plan and follow it. Take breaks during your study period. I suggest 25 minute study sessions as a good starting point. We're all different, so you can tweak that to suit yourself. Use questions to help you revise and recall. And reward yourself when you've accomplished what you plan to do. So during this session, we covered an academic year overview. Where do you start? Do you have a study plan? How can you optimise your studying? Revise and recall. And a summary. If you've got any questions about this session, then feel free to contact me on askldc at gcu.ac.uk. And remember, any links shown in the PowerPoint video I've just shown you there will be in the description section below the YouTube video. Thank you very much.